James Spann has one of the most recognizable faces in Alabama. These are my future students right here. Uh, yeah, I've been watching these since I was like a little kid. Have a good day now. Okay, okay. What about the weather for the weekend ahead? That forecast and much more coming up in just a bit, so stay with us. That's because he's the weatherman for ABC 3340 in Birmingham. And he's made it his mission to teach people about the weather and warn them about potential hazards. With 39 years of broadcast experience, he's become really good at it. One thing we've learned that people really don't like, they don't like it when you stand in front of their town. Now, oh, I see. So you need to make sure that right. whenever you're talking and about it, you move. You come over here if you mm -hmm. want to and work okay. this monitor. Now, okay. now you, oh, you made the wrong turn. Oh, I see. You never want to turn your back to the camera. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me do this again. So you would move over this yes. way. Yes, yes. I see. see how easy this is. See? About 8 o'clock this morning. I am paid money to stand here in front of a green wall when the weather is life-threatening. That's my core job. The main threat back in Mississippi... And it's but a very despite his love for educating viewers about science, James draws a line at climate change. He won't talk about it on the air. When your audience maybe tweets at you or, or asks you, is this climate change, what is your reaction to that? I say it's weather. And if you want to know about climate, go talk to a climatologist. I right. do weather. I don't do climate. What exactly is your position on climate change? My position is this. The climate is changing. The climate has always changed. The climate always will change. The question is, what is man's role? So what, you think what, humans are causing climate change? There has to be some anthropogenic element to it. The question is how much? And, and for the, you, it's the, not necessarily the majority? No, natural variability, in my opinion, is still the primary driver. And all of a sudden, you become a sinner. There's that clearing line it's the unambiguous right position now, of the American Powell, Meteorological Society that climate change is real and oh, humans are rain, responsible. But TV forecasters don't always agree. There's no linkage to CO2 and temperature, unless, of course, it's one of these books, these 3D books you've got to stand there on your head and cross your eyes to look at. Solar cycles have a lot more to do with climate change on this planet than do CO2 emission and global warming. The national media reported on this new study from the sky is falling or a doomsday point of view. Remember, these are scientists. And for most viewers, the weather person is the only scientist they interact with on a regular basis. A survey of around 2,000 American Meteorological Society members released last year revealed that 38% of meteorologists aren't convinced that humans are the main cause of climate change. But that fact still doesn't get at the larger issue. Namely, whether it's a TV forecaster's job to talk about climate change at all. Why do you not feel a responsibility to talk about climate so, change? So if you're in my position, you're on the wall over here. Yeah. And we've got a tornado that's down in Greensboro, Alabama, moving toward Brent, moving at 45 miles an hour. You're supposed to stop and say, wait a minute, this is caused by man-made climate change. Mm -hmm. Climate attribution studies take years. My role is to mitigate the loss of human life. Somebody else's role is to fight that battle. You have a platform. You're a scientist with a platform, which a lot of other scientists don't necessarily have or are very bad at. You're good at it. When does it become the responsibility of a meteorologist to talk about this issue that will affect millions of lives? That's a, that's a fair question. And my position is they hire me here to forecast the weather, mm -hmm. They didn't hire me as a climatologist to discuss mm -hmm. these things. You see, that this has developed tension here. We started talking about climate, and all of mm -hmm. a sudden now it's, you know, everybody's tense. There are broadcast meteorologists who don't get uncomfortable talking about climate. Paul Gross is one of them. Hey, Brandon. Wrap around twice. In my show, I am going to be doing a little climate change thing, just so yeah, you know. It'd be like in the middle, after the rainfall graphic. Paul Gross is one of the meteorologists for NBC's News 4 in Detroit. He says he's been talking about climate change on the air since the 90s. And yeah, another heavy rain event. If you're noticing an increase in these, the science actually supports you. Let me show you what's happening due to the warming climate. Paul is very active in the meteorological community. He's previously served as the chairman of the AMS's Committee on the Station Scientist, which aims to give on-air meteorologists the tools they need to talk about other scientific fields like climate. Well, there's an old saying that climate is what you expect, weather is what you get. By understanding what's happening with our climate, we can cross the line, if you will, 
and tell people in terms of trends if we're looking at more or less of a certain kind of day-to-day -day type of weather or weather extreme. And that's why I find it particularly important to talk about climate science. Paul says he rarely gets pushback from his viewers. But advocacy groups have tried to influence his coverage. I just throw that stuff in the trash. And believe me, I get plenty of it. So you get mail I do about get mail. climate change? Generally, uh, it's only on one side of the aisle, if you will, and it's from groups that are opposed to the human uh, element in involving climate change. And there are some very well-funded groups that send a lot of misinformation. Do you want to tell me who those groups are? Well, I'll just mention one. Uh, it's called the Heartland Institute. Uh, I believe they're based out of Chicago. I get glossy mailings from them. I get emails all the time from them. and. All that stuff goes in the trash. A Heartland Institute spokesperson told us that they send these materials to TV meteorologists all across the country. He also said that Paul's claim that they spread misinformation is the kind of scare tactics that many TV meteorologists engage in, such as linking every severe weather event to man-caused global warming. Does it surprise you at all to know that there are meteorologists out there still on the air who, who don't think that humans are causing climate change? It's just an overwhelming balance of science that shows that we're warming at an unnatural rate and that the proximate cause is human activity. I don't know how you can ignore that science, that's all. I'm not going to directly criticize a colleague because they might have their own reasons, but I would only say that I follow the science and the science has pointed me in a direction. James and Paul actually have a lot in common. They refuse to have their stance on climate change influenced by outside forces, and they both agree on the basic function of their job, to educate people about the weather and keep them safe. That hasn't changed, but scientific understanding on global warming has, and not everyone's willing to change along with it.